All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna start off this video uh, with by saying that you get to watch me go down a a bit of a rabbit hole on this one. I'll straighten this camera out. Camera adds weight, huh? All right. So let's see. Uh, I start off on the right track and quickly get off track and almost make a actually I made a bad call but luckily didn't follow through with it I was able to correct it before we made any costly mistakes um, and I guess that's the message in the video you know um, I'll follow it up at the end and uh, kind of show you some slides and give some credit to the people that helped me out um, and set me straight and got this vehicle fixed so let's take a look and then you can uh we'll catch up at the end <clears throat> all right let's see if we can do this together for those that might have been prefaced 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 i said it right this is the truck i was discussing over the weekend with a couple of guys i think i put it up on one of the forums um i got called in on a 2008 ford f-150 5.4 um, no AC, no clutch engagement. Um, I have a display that responds appropriately to all of my buttons. AC, auto, all of that good stuff. Temperature changes, I can do all of that stuff, right? Let's go back down. Put this all the cold, fans on. I am in the HVAC module. Um, I have no codes, although when I run the self-test, the only thing I come up with is a left blend door actuator failure, which I'm not concerned about. What I don't have is ACCS, the AC, uh, AC cycling switch, the low pressure switch, the little two wire switch on the low side of the AC. The PCM does not respond to that switch. I did check, I do have power going in, I have power going out. I'm not going under the hood at the moment. If I do, I'll film it, but um, 12 volts going in, little black and yellow wire coming back out when the switch closes, as long as it sees low side pressure and it signals to PCM, gives it the thumbs up, that to go ahead and that part of it is good. I can't get that PID to change and I'll show that in a second. Um, what else, what else, what else? I just wanted to go back in here and check some other things to see that if there's anything else that stands out, again, this is a simple input into the PCM to, to um, I guess, acknowledge that we have a like a high side transducer that shows some static pressure on the high side. Same thing with the low pressure switch, stops it from over pressurizing or under pressurizing and damaging components. I said that right, or probably too fast. I apologize. I really want to get out of here quick, but. Um, Sunload, whoa, my sunload status is responding. My air conditioning switch status responds when I hit the button. It's a little troubled because it's the only, hold on, let's do this. Let me, it responds better if I get some data off of it. Now, if I press the auto button, it comes up auto. If I press AC, it comes up AC. That tells me that that at least it's recognizing I'm pushing the button and that the dis display, the fact that it says AC, it's recognizing that it's that I'm re requesting AC. Also, also to keep in mind, the HVAC module runs through the instrument cluster from the instrument cluster to the PCM. Why? Because Ford. Um, again, no, no trouble codes. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This is all seat stuff. Operating status, fan speed, <sighs> monitoring module voltage is good. Outside temp, there's another one. Outside temp is good. I think somewhere in here I saw cabin temp. Um, thought process, if it's too cold, it won't turn the AC on, which is fine, but I still want to know how come it doesn't see the cycling switch input. A lot of suggestions were, hey, what's your outside temp, what's your inside temp? And I get all of that, and I appreciate all the help. My question was, how come? 
through all through all of that, I should still see that that low pressure switch input into the PCM change from off to on. It's a simple off on switch. There's there's no reading. It's not like the high side transducer where it gives you a voltage because it's 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 actually responding to different pressures. The low side switch is just on off. And I don't see it, so I don't think that all the any other any other inputs would have a, an effect on that input. If that makes any sense. Um, so these are all the inputs I have on the, on the HVAC side. Let's back. Oop, let's not do that. Let's go out of this. Okay. I'm gonna go. This is the HVAC module. We're gonna come out of this. We're gonna go into the PCM. Just for, um, just for poops and giggles, we'll check codes. All right, got a P1000 because they did clear the codes. I think they did that before I got here. That was like that the other day when I was here. Uh, back, oh, glare, live data. <clears throat> All right, back into, um, where'd I go? I'm back into PCM. I'm gonna bring up all the AC data PIDs just to make this a little bit easier. I don't need accelerator, ba, ba, ba. air conditioning, clutch, air conditioning, air conditioning. I think this is all I'm gonna get out of the PCM as far as AC goes. All right, AC pressure switch is my high side switch, which is open, because when it goes high, when pressure goes high, it will go closed and shut, and again, signal to shut the AC off. And that is the voltage that's coming out of my high side switch, 1.36, which is normal. Anything between one and two at this point is normal. Um, and there is my actual pressure from the high side pressure switch, 126. My clutch is allowed, my air conditioning clutch is off. And this is the one that concerns me, the air conditioning compressor cycling switch is also off and that should be on because I have voltage at pin 19 of the PCM. And I know the PCM sees it because if I disconnect the low pressure switch, this PID changes. This one does not. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. <laughs> uh, this one changes when I disconnect the low pressure switch. If I pull the low pressure switch to plug on it, this changes to no. Now, let's go back into the air conditioning clutch. Indicates the condition of the wide open throttle air conditioning cutout relay disables the air conditioning compressor during wide open throttle. That is off. Now off, I imagine would be off. No, it's not, I do not have wide open throttle. This is the one that concerns me. That is the input I am missing. Every other input is normal. At this point, I'm calling this for a bad PCM. I'll let you know how I make out. Okay, so um, we wound up not putting a PCM in it. I didn't, I wasn't happy with the call when I made it. I questioned my information and I reached out for some help. Uh, I did get a friend of ours, Justin, who I reached out to because I know he's he's the Ford guy and he was gracious enough to set me straight this was a I'll put some slides in here um, somewhere over here and I will I'll try to move off to the side so I don't <clears throat> block them um, important things to take away from this the pinpoint tests from Ford which I probably don't give enough credit to, uh, was part of the answer. The reason I don't give them enough credit because they tend to, the, the pinpoint tests, like a lot of flow charts, tend to, tend to end too quickly and you know, replace a module, replace a part. They don't take into account some of the variables that we run into in the field. Corrosion issues, stuff like that. Um, they'll real quick say put an ohm meter on it and that's it they don't talk about load testing circuits too often um, so the pinpoint test in particular one in particular pointed to the fact that that 
recirculating switch needed two, the PCM was looking for two inputs to change the PID. Even though the PID looked like it was just for the cycling switch, it needed to see the power from the cycling switch, and it also needed to see a signal from the climate control module. The climate control module goes through the instrument cluster, from the instrument cluster to the PCM. Why? Because Ford. If you follow if you follow the pinpoint test the rest of the way down, you will eventually get to the point where it says replace, I believe it was replace the instrument cluster, which is the, also the wrong answer. But it did give me a lead or it did take me away from the idea that the PCM is bad because the PCM wasn't receiving, very possibly wasn't receiving both inputs. I knew it was getting the input from the cycling switch, but I didn't know who was getting the other input. After talking with Justin again, who, and Justin was the one who, who pointed out the pinpoint test that showed that it was looking for the two inputs, so I knew I was on the wrong track with a bad PCM. He suggested just try reflashing the instrument cluster with Asbelt data. Um, there's no particular reason why it would need that. There's nothing in pinpoint tests or anywhere else that says to, to do that. Uh, or there's no documentation that would lead me in that direction. So I did. I did an as built. Let me just back up one second. I did also earlier on, reading through some information, had said that had pointed towards a possible instrument cluster problem, but wouldn't say why. Uh, Identifix, I think it was, there was an article or a write-up that says look at the instrument cluster for voltages or whatever, but it wouldn't say why. It wouldn't particular, particularly say that the PCM was looking for it. So fast forward, uh, FJDS, I plug in, I go to do a as-built. Uh, I had to unplug the instrument cluster because all it FJDS only only gave me the option to do a PMI, which is a copy and paste, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do as built, so I had to, uh, had to unplug the, the instrument cluster, go to do a PMI. Obviously, it failed because it didn't see the instrument cluster. It says, "Okay, we're gonna, now it says we're going to have to do an as built program." I went to the website, I pulled the, the data I needed, did the as built, put it all through, and presto, AC works. Uh, I don't know where the program went. I don't know if it f forgot it or somebody played with it and didn't feel like telling us. But the, the shop owner, the owner of the truck, insists that nobody touched the instrument, cl instrument cluster. It was original. So it worked. It went out the door. Point of the story is if something doesn't seem right, it's probably not. If you have help, reach out for it. Use the pinpoint test, even though they may not always make sense. You may get some other relevant information out of it, like I did, and that's that. So, with the help of Justin and some pinpoint tests and some good tooling, uh, it's resolved. And that's it. Guys, thanks. I wish I had the video on the follow-up to it on the program, but I didn't. Um, I was a bit frustrated at that point. So that being said, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.